championships on both sides in this rivalry between the Gators and the Dogs. Some say it's the Georgia-Florida game. Some say it's the Florida-Georgia game. 81 degrees and sunshine. Well, I told you, sometimes they say it's 101st meeting. And some say it's 102nd. Florida's not counting 1904. <laughs> Georgia's won five of the last six as their Mackey winning All-American tight end Brock Bowers who made the trip and as Jenny talked with Kirby Smart before the game just the fact that he's here raises the confidence level of his team that has to play without him. And for Florida seen him over there without a helmet on raises their confidence. <laughs> he went five for 154. Remember the That's memorable right. moments in this game a year ago. He had that great one where he tipped it to yeah. himself down the sideline with a long touchdown. Georgia won the toss and deferred, so they kick away. And Florida comes up on a short kick and takes it at the 11-yard line. And bouncing off to the outside, and a nice return out to the 35 by Trevor Etienne. That's a great way to start for the Gators. And our lineups presented by Papa John's. Graham Mertz out of Overland Park, Kansas, by way of Wisconsin. In the last couple of weeks, as Gary said, maybe nobody hotter in the country. 76% completion overall on the season. 71% the last two weeks. No interceptions, maybe more importantly. Top percentage of completions in the SEC. Carson Beck is number two. So he'll line his troops up at the 34-yard line. We love the jet sweep. That's Eugene Wilson. They call him Trey, who was in motion. Mertz, plenty of time. Fires down the middle on the run. And it is number three all the way to the 39-yard line, Trey Wilson. This is the formation that was so good and the motion that hurt Tennessee coming across and then the square in. The potential is to give it to him, throw the screen to him, or how about that? Pick up a 27, and immediately the Gators in dogland at the 39-yard line. Everyone wondering for the Gator fans, would we see the South Carolina offense? This looks like it. Now they go to the ground and pick up about three from Ottrell Johnson as Kamari Lassiter made the tackle for Georgia. Here's the rest of the offense for the Gators. They get their center back. Ricky Pearsall coming off a career high in the last game. He's the main target for Graham Mertz, although Mertz hit Eugene Wilson the third on that opener. Montrell Johnson along with Trevor Etienne, the two top backs for the Gators. In the pistol set, play action. Mertz wants to throw it to Johnson, and he's taken down. Well, not quite. I thought he was going to be taken down by Chaz Chambliss, but he got away. He did, but still held him to no gain. The Georgia defense, you know, Florida loves the screen pass. Actually, both these teams love the screen pass, and Georgia was ready for it. Didn't touch, did he? Just his nope. hand. Now let's see if that Georgia offensive line could stand up to this pass rush. Florida, one of the worst third down conversion teams in the country. They'll send Johnson in motion. He pump fakes that way and comes back the other way, and it's going to be a first down to Trey Wilson. So two big catches by the freshman early. Ways to get the ball to your playmakers. Eugene Wilson, the true freshman, got hurt against Tennessee. Coming back, but you see, when we talked to Billy Napier, I said, who's to remind you of? He goes, Steve Smith. Yeah. Really big and strong in his thighs. Powerful player. We knew he would be a great one for us, even as a true freshman. He said he thought it was the number one guy when their signing class was announced, and he has not disappointed. At the 29, first and 10, Florida. Maybe three for Montrell Johnson against the Georgia defense that again is number one in the SEC in basically every category. Kamari Lassiter playing a, at an All-American level on the corner. They're going to be busy apparently if Florida's going to keep slinging it around like this. Etienne now comes in to the backfield behind Mertz. As you look behind them in the pistol set, second down and seven. More spread formations again. They showed it last week against South Carolina, well, two weeks ago against South Carolina. Here's a slip screen to the outside. Georgia waiting for that one. Wilson, no game. 
So we've been watching this Georgia defense for a few years now, and they've been on top of the league because of this. They pursue great athletes. We're talking about those great signing classes. A lot of big players left, but they got a lot of them left on this team. No doubt. So another third down. They picked up the last one on third and nine. This is third and six. Third down defense for Georgia. Best around. Slant. There's a first down. Wilson is going to score. Touchdown, Florida. Twenty-five yard touchdown strike. The indicator put a man in motion. That tells the quarterback, obviously, bump off. Ooh, I like my look. I got a slant to the top. A perfect throw. If you're going to throw a slant pass and you want yards after catch, put it right on the number and see if he gets in before the knee comes down. I think he did. Ball looked like it crossed the line before the knee hit and capping a 66 yard drive. That was effective. That was on a third and six, the touchdown throw. I'm going to take a look at it still. Under review. Where's that football right when that knee comes down? Right now, Tyke Smith still got his hands under his knees, I, I think, think so, yes. And it's not his forearm, it's just pushing forward. It's going to be close, but I think he got it. Gene Steratore is with us. An early call, Gene. I think I'm going to go with Gary on this one, Brad. I was We're looking together. kind of at the shin. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Let's go down together, Gary. What do you say? I do it. We do it. <laughs> yeah, I, if anything, the shin, and when we got the other angle, the, the, the Georgia player's arm is kind of blocking that shin. Here's a great look. But I'm, I'm just looking just to see if that shin may have hit After right before the, the knee did, field, but I think it's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. Uh, was confirmed nothing to overrule that call on the field. What a drive. Beautiful drive. Remember, they had a nice opening kickoff return to at the end. So they set up shop at the 34. And remember how this Florida offense started out all year, a little bit conservative. But Graham Mertz has earned the football, and he's producing Trey Smack in for the point after. An early shocker against the number one defense in the conference. Eugene Wilson, Trey, at four catches for 62 yards on the drive. Mertz was perfect, and the Gators up early by seven. And that was pre Kirby Smart. Georgia to bring it out to the 25 yard line for their first offensive series as we take a look at our Papa John's lineups. And it starts with this guy, Carson Beck, the junior out of right here in Jacksonville. His home high school, about 18 miles from this stadium. And his first start. In this matchup, of course, he's been here before as a backup to Stetson Bennett. So he sort of felt it, but he probably won't feel the pressure like he does today. First down from the 25. Ajon Edwards spins his way for about four. As we take a look at the rest of the Georgia offense. Dejan coming off a career high against Vandy, 146 yards two weeks ago, has the first carry in this one. And Jones is in there starting for Florida at linebacker. We'll keep our eye on number six. He's hopping around there, trying to get his troops in the right spot. So apparently his knee's going to be okay so far. Second down at six. Back on the roll and fires on the run and throws a strike. For the 44, and it's out to Dominic Lovett. It does look like Shamir James is not 100% though, but they want him out there. A well delivered ball by Carson Beck, right to the outside on the run. Beautiful. 
First down from the 44. Bobbled it a little bit. Did he hold on to it? Now Georgia trying to get the snap off, and they do. And spinning out across midfield is Dylan Bell against the Florida defense. Shamar James injured in the pregame warmups, but as we said, he's out there. And hopefully his left knee is going to be okay. We're in a heavy brace on it. Wide receiver screen to Rosemary Jack Saints. And he got it to the 42-yard line. That's the flexibility that this Georgia offense has when Dylan Bell comes in or Muse comes in. You don't know if they're coming in at receiver or running back. Made last year, remember, it was the tight end combination. Yeah. And this year now, it's those wide receivers that can line up anywhere. And they're 86 and 87, so it's kind of yes, hard to exactly. pick and choose when you're playing defense. And now everybody shifts. Bell and Edwards flanking Carson Beck in the shotgun on first down. And now Bell moves out of there, throws it out to Edwards. Makes a cut, keeps his balance, made something out of nothing. That's what Edwards always seems to do. You know, he just feels the attack of those linebackers from different angles. He anticipates the cut, never seems out of control no. with the ball, right? I mean, he's always patient, faster than he looks all the time. I mean, just hard to hit when he's got the ball. Just outside the Gator 40 yard line. Second down and eight. Play action. Beck comes up firing on the oh. sideline. Oscar Delp. And the there's a replacement. Well, you can't replace Brock Bowers. Well, he just did. That was a Brock Bowers <laughs> catch right there. He's built just like him, too. Well, and that's exactly how Brock would have caught this one. One wow. hand layup, and we've seen it all year. And that's a way to make everybody feel good about the tight end position early. 18-yard, one-handed grab to the 22. Beck looking for more. Throws complete down to the five-yard line. It's Lad McConkey. How about these two quarterbacks starting off this game, okay? They have both come through. They both outperformed the expectations of what everybody had hoped for. And the answer on the wheel route, how ironic is that? Because the last uh -huh. loss, the story was the wheel route in this game for Florida. But the accuracy of these two quarterbacks... The way they're putting that football, I don't know if people could stop these throws. Mertz was 5 for 5 for 60 yards on their touchdown drive. Beck's 5 for 5 for 59 right now. Back to the ground. Dejan Edwards, no gain, maybe a loss. Nice job by Kelby Collins to make the stop. Second down to go. Halfway through the first quarter, an exciting one. In both directions. Georgia's had a little issue scoring touchdowns in the red zone. They're looking for one here to tie things up. Kendall Milton checks in to the dog's backfield for the first time. He'll get the carry. Goes for a couple. Got it down around the three where it's third and goal. Ran right at number one, Prince Lee Van Ellen, and he made the tackle. You know, that's been the challenge for Prince Lee. He's been good rushing the passer, but George is going to run right at him, and that time he made a good stop. Gators change up some defensive personnel. Georgia likewise on offense. Second in the country, third down conversions are the Bulldogs. They'd love a third and goal conversion here. Beck fires high and nobody home Rosemary Jack Saint was the only guy that could have got a hand on it and he said Carson you got to bring it down I'm only 6-2 I'm pretty sure Kirby will go field goal here don't want to get the other team feeling too good about himself good stand by this Florida defense nowhere really to go with the football you got to take three here I agree with this and that means Peyton Woodring the freshman kicker 12 out of 15 on the year Started a little shaky early in the season and since has an eight kick win, um, success streak. This will be a 22 yard attempt out of a Carson Beck hole. Woodring from 22 splits the uprights. But Georgia goes the length of the field much like Florida did but had to settle for three. But so far we've seen trying to replace Brock Bowers some different people, including Oscar Dell. 
Got him down close. They had to settle for three. Get us in the Halloween spirit by spending an hour with our favorite ghosts. Settle in for a real treat on Monday, starting at 8, 7 Central here on CBS. This game's always around Halloween time, and it really doesn't matter. The costumes outside are pretty spectacular <laughs> all the time. And Florida will start at the 25-yard line. And that's during that uh, break, we noticed on third down that Florida was trying to call timeout. Look at the signal right here. Florida doesn't know what the defense is. A defensive coordinator, Austin Armstrong, is running down the sideline trying to signal timeout. But there, there he goes. There he goes. Timeout. They don't have a defense in, and they get away with it. Armstrong, who is a quality control coach back in Athens in 2019, and now in his first year as defensive coordinator, boy, they have improved immensely. They're about 127 yards less yardage given up a game and nine or ten points less than this time a year ago. So that's been a bright spot for Florida, too, this year. Mertz throws and Pearsall with a reception, but just a short game. Brought down by Javon Bullard. Ricky Pearsall, their leading receiver. That's his 45th catch of the year. Nice cut outside by Etienne. He's got a first down. Mikey Smith knocked him out, but not before he picked up first down yards. Talking about that Florida offensive line. Can they handle this running the game? Muzaka this time, right guard. Watch him handle the blitz. Easily turns in the linebacker, and that allows that running game to get outside. Pick up a 14. First down at the 40 for the Gators. Wilson in motion. Into the slot. Up top. Little quick draw on it opens up. Etienne got to midfield, might have a first down. Well, start out loosening him up, throwing, and then you throw the kind of the quick screen to the outside, and all of a sudden he's blocking inside work. And that time it was Hanson coming across on the split zone inside. Beautiful. And he did get the first down just over midfield. Here's a jet sweep, and then around. And Pearsall. He's going to go down for a loss. I'll tell you, that's a 10-yard gain for Florida because if that ball isn't caught by Pearsall, that thing's going to be back there 10 to 12 yards. Watch this catch by Pearsall. Whoa! <laughs> one of his best grabs of the year. <laughs> yes. Well, he's had a good one. We yeah, he one. has. <laughs> that one-handed one was pretty exactly. spectacular. That's a one-yard loss, but it was actually a nine-yard gain. <laughs> Two tight ends set for the Gators. They've been using more and more. Their young tight ends improving week by week. Etienne just blasts off the left side, got back across midfield again. Talk about good catches by Ricky Pearsall. Don't see too many any better than that one. Oh man, that's something. And he got hit too. It wasn't just a catch. Third down and long. Yeah, and they're two for two on third down so far in this game. That could be a story. And they've been terrible all year, but they picked up third and nine and third and six en route to their touchdown. This is third and 11. Ball was out, and it's way back at the 38-yard line recovered by the offensive line. I think it was Jalen Walker that came around the edge that time. Just a speed rush and took it right out of his hand. Going up against Damian George at right there. Watch Walker come around the edge right there. Just beats Damian George and takes it right out of his wow. hand. Great play. Not a great block by George, but at least he kept his head up and found the football. Right. right? That was the good part of the play for number 76. <laughs> yeah. Finished well. Jeremy Crawshaw will punt. Makai Muse waits back on the other end for Georgia. A low kick. Muse going to take it at the 21. 
He's got one touchdown return this year. He's about a guy away from getting a big one there, and he knows it. Nonetheless, a nice return for him with 237 remaining, and he comes up limping. And that'll be something to watch as well. He's their top return guy, both as a kickoff and a punt returner. Power drive to get here. Okay, so when you drive, you think a little bit. How do you replace 19? Well, the two tight ends, first of all, if you add up those two numbers, we're at 11. Okay. Yeah. So we only got eight more to go. Let's take Ra Ra Thomas. We're getting close. Okay. Yeah. Who we got? Let's go Kendall Minton. We're at 18. One more. Uh, Rosemary St. Jack. How about that? All equals 19. Well, now it's all right to go over that. They just don't want to go under. <laughs> exactly. You want the over, not the under. <laughs> First down with Brock on the sideline with his teammates. Carson Beck fires out in the flat. Dejan Edwards incomplete. Let's check in with Jenny. Well, you mentioned Brock is on the sideline here. Coach Smart told me his presence alone brings a sense of leadership. He said Bowers is here to help aid the young tight ends, give them more confidence. And him traveling does count against their allotted travel roster of 74. That just shows how important he is to this team, guys. No doubt. I think he's the best football player in the country at any position and whether he makes it back or not his contribution to Georgia for two national championships in two and a half years will never be forgotten in Athens that's for sure that's for sure so now Georgia's got a third down was a thought we might see Amarius Mims uh, Offensive tackle they lost early in the year. I guess it was the Auburn game. He had tightrope surgery as well, but they gave it a try, and they're still sticking with trust at right tackle. Kirby Smart says, I'm getting pretty good at this tightrope surgery stuff. Yeah. I have too many of them. Third and four. Back with a blitz cutter. Zips it across the middle, complete first down, and on the run is Ra Ra Thomas. So there's number five chipping in. As Gary said for number 19. Well, the that's the down. formula right there. They got a lot of good receivers, a lot of good players. And this time, it's a six-man rush. And Georgia picks it up and allows Carson Beck to step in the throw. If you're going to pick up six-man rushes, you're going to complete a lot of passes. Pick up a 19 for Ra Ra Thomas, who transferred to Georgia from Miss Mississippi State. Was their leading receiver a year ago. So first down for the dogs of the Gator 41. Beck stands tall. He's going to throw it away. Tried to go with another wheel route that time, and Florida defended it. Going to come right out on motion, and then watch him go up the sideline. Defended well. No one to throw the ball to. Maybe could have hung in and thrown it over there, but when you're feeling that time in your head, you know, get rid of the ball, yeah. especially on first down. Scooby Williams did a nice job staying with Delp, who was part of that double wheel route, really, over that sideline. So wisely for Beck, just toss that one away, live for another down, which is second and ten. Muse in motion. Beck, look out from behind, got the pass away, he threw a strike. Lad McConkey, McConkey, touchdown, Georgia. 41 yards. Watch how the motion gets Florida out of position as soon as the motion man leaves. Man to man here, but when the motion goes, all of a sudden, that's the guy that got him. Ladies, five yards outside. Can't make the play. Easy throw. And McConkey looks back and says, I mean, I only got to beat a linebacker with a brace on. That's all I got to do. I can do that. 41 yard touchdown catch. The first touchdown of the year. Just for Lad McConkey, who missed four games with a bad back. Just a bit of motion got Florida with the wrong outside technique, and they paid for it dearly. Woodring's extra point has given Georgia the lead. Lad McConkey. His 100th reception as a Georgia Bulldog. I don't think he'll forget it because he looks at the Florida defense and says, forget it. Georgia in front. Team inducted four new members yesterday. Ernest Graham, one of five Gators with 3,000 plus career rushing yards. 
Joe Hayden was an All-American cornerback, went on to be an All-Pro in the NFL. Terrence Edwards still owns most of Georgia's receiving records and joins his brother Robert as a Georgia Hall of Famer. And Mark Richt led the dogs from 2001 to 2015, 145 wins at Georgia, second in team history. And the first time he beat Florida, Mark, that is, well, I remember it was 2004. He was a pretty happy camper. And this kick out of the end zone. And that 2004 Mark Richt victory in this rivalry gets the <laughs> thumbs up and here comes his son David jumps into his arms coach Rick good to see him with us yesterday right now his dogs or Kirby Smart's dogs leading Florida 10 to 7 courtesy of a 66 yard drive and five plays took him only a minute and 14 seconds and look at the quarterback comparison wow yeah nice start the only thing that if you're a Gator fan, only one touch so far from Pearson. One touch from minus one yard, I believe. Montreal Johnson on the move behind Mertz. Graham sets up. Flushed flag, probably a holding call on Florida, and he throws it out. Incomplete. Let's see if the it does seem to happen all the time when that quarterback leaves the pocket. You know, those yep. offensive linemen are allowed to put their hands on the rushing person when they stay inside, stay inside the body. But when the quarterback runs, the offensive lineman doesn't know it, and they end up kind of latching on. I think it's going to be an offensive face mask. If the preliminary signal that I saw from Matt Leffler. And here's the call. Personal foul, face mask, on the offense, number 65. Half the distance, replay first down. Aguakin, the center that they just got back to health, is the guilty party. Missed five of the first seven games. He's right in the middle of the screen, number 65. Protection starts out being, oh, it actually happened real early in the play. His hands went up right away, and then he yanked them down. Well, that backs him up. Just inside the 13 yard line first and 22. That's two consecutive plays the strip sack and now this holding penalty. The play it safe on the ground and a good choice and a good run a great run. Wow. Johnson just keeps on going Was that right about 14 15 yards wasn't it. Yep. That's going to make second down a lot easier for him. They run the ball this time right at Chambliss, number 32. Good job by the right side of that offensive line. Montreal Johnson, the ground game for Florida is a lot different when they're at the swamp or when they're on the road. This yeah. is a neutral site. You figured if they split the difference here? Yeah, 125 would be good. And they had 30, well, they got about 30 yards. So they're right on target. And that includes, by the way, the sack, the strip sack. So they're running the ball very effectively. Empty backfield. Mertz fires to the sideline. Complete out to the 30 to Hayden Hansen, the tight end. They still going to bring up a third down, but a more manageable third down than it would have been without that Montreal Johnson run. When I talked to, talked to Rob Sale, he said we would really love, if we're going to get third downs, we would really love to get it inside third and five, six. When we get seven or eight, we feel the pressure here. Well, He's got what he wanted. Rob's third and five. Let's see what you got. Seems a bit longer though. It seems almost six and a half. Oh, nice. Yeah, they get it anyway, yes. I think. It's going to be really close. Kirby's right there with the official Khalil trying Jackson. to mark it. Jackson makes the catch. Again, good throw, just slightly behind this time. Kirby's trying to make the mark right with the linesman. Here it is right across was his knee down. They may look at this. Well, we got a long time to look at it. I can tell you that as we played one and it's been an exciting first quarter in Jacksonville. Georgia trailed but came back to take the lead at the end of the first 10 7 Bulldogs. Stan Murray is our replay official. Matt Leffler is our referee who's under the hood. Or into the hood right now. Taking a look at this last play. Gene Serator, our rules officials with us too. Kirby's right on the line right there. Ready to make the call, you know. <laughs> it's pretty funny. 
he makes the call short. The linesman makes the call over. The review, nothing definitive so far, right? Knees down there. I, I, I think it's really close. Where they have the ball spotted is a first down. But again, that's the very end of the play. That was on third down and six. And Gene's still with us. Gene, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you guys. I mean, it really, it's, it's it's such a close play. And and I'm listening to Gary talk about how Kirby thinks he's a little bit short, but the ref <laughs> might think he's a little bit long. That one didn't surprise me too much, I, guys. I've been in that situation before <laughs> many times. Right. Gene, did the, did the linesman on that side of the field make the call? Because he was not in position. He was behind the play and didn't have the, who made that call in this group During here? the timeout, there was a review. After review, the player was short of the line to gain. It'll be fourth down at the 34 yard line. Right. The, the, the trailing official was at a, a different angle. And I, I, I knew it was really close here. Now the question is it's inches. Do you go for it? He How said, aggressive you're going to be? He said the 34. If they put it on the 34, it's going to be fourth down and a yard. Well, that, I think that, it's going to be closer than that. Yeah, it's it's that doesn't seem to be a fair spot either. If you're going to spot it, it should be right next to that. I'm line. with you. Length of the football or less at the most. That's what Billy Napier is trying to explain right now too. If it's fourth down, you better not make it fourth and a yard. You better make it fourth and about eight inches. So the battle of well, you know, Billy came here to fight. He's well, fighting. Let's see if first do you try to draw him off sides. Maybe you can get a cheap one. Second is do you just go sneak? Boy, I, I see that's two feet. I don't think that that is where the ball was. I don't, I, I don't I, think so. I, if it's if it's short, it's closer than that. We have fourth and inches down, but that is maybe 24 inches. And they run up the line in a hurry. Yeah. Trying to draw Georgia off sides, now under center. And they snap it in a wildcat. And Etienne is swarmed under by Georgia. They stop it. What a huge play in both directions. Snapped it right through the quarterback's legs. That was going to be a pass. Etienne is left-handed. Watch him reach up with his left hand. He was attempting to throw this ball. Snapped right between the quarterback. It's going to be a pass, but he cannot get it off. And Smile London was there to say, uh-uh. And George is going to take over at about the 31-yard line. Right between the quarterback's legs. And Etienne trying to get rid of it and Smile Munden hanging on for dear life. So a golden opportunity for Georgia here on offense from the Gator 31 yard line. Dejon Edwards, big hole left side. Edwards down inside the 20, picks up 12. I wonder if this guy gets sore after games. <laughs> you never get a clean hit on him, do you? Boom, ba boom, ba boom. He just can, goes from. He's like a boxer. He's so light on his feet. Jamar James playing with that big brace on his knee made the stop, but not before Dejan got a first down for Georgia. Well, Kirby argued for the mark. He won the review, and then he won fourth down. Carson Beck waits too long. Brought down from behind Lamar Lyons. Jamari Lyons, I beg your pardon. Good coverage on this play. Watch when he gets the ball. He has time to throw. He looks, does not like it. And then the one thing that people question in the red zone is could Carson Beck do some of the Stetson Bennett stuff? Yep. That's where Stetson was really, really a threat. His running ability near the goal line. That's only the seventh sack given up by Georgia this year, and that was a coverage sack, and Beck couldn't quite get back to the line. So second down and 11. Edwards to the edge. Edwards to the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. 20 yards for Dejon Edwards.
Hey, the block at the point of attack. Watch it right here. Watch this block on the outside. It's trust. Watch him turn him in. And boom, now your running back's gone. Dejon Edwards looks shifty. He looks smooth, but he's obviously faster than we think. <laughs> Trots into the corner with his seventh touchdown on the ground this year. We highlighted him in our offensive alignment for Georgia that he'd be big because you win the ground game in this series, you usually win the ball game in this series. Woodring's extra point is up and good. So remember, it started with fourth down defense. On fourth down and a couple feet, Smile Munden makes the play on Etienne. Georgia goes to work at the 31 and number 30 takes it to the corner and it's 17 to 7 words touchdown from our AT&T 5G pylon cam there you go 20 yard score Mike Bobo says that's just the way we drew it up Georgia has scored two touchdowns in the last two minutes and 44 seconds remember that game a couple of years ago when they scored like 17 in the last two and a half minutes of the half, whenever that was. One's almost impossible to forget. Exactly. Let's send it back. Adam Zucker out of New York studio. Jeep update. Zuck, what do you got? Well, Ness, we've got the fifth lead change of the second half in Lawrence. And after a monster fourth down conversion, Devin Neal with no resistance puts Kansas on top of number six Oklahoma with a minute to go. A five point lead there. The Jayhawks have lost the last 18 to the Sooners, guys. Fired up in Kansas and Oklahoma would drop from the undefeated ranks if that holds up. First three possessions, a touchdown, then a punt, then on a fourth and about two feet, Georgia stops the Gators. So let's see if they can get back to the gear they were in on their opening drive where Graham Mertz was perfect and they took the 7-0 lead. Georgia with a blitz. Mertz running out of time, going down. Back at the 15 and it's... Dumas Johnson. Well, this time I think it was Smile Munden comes in and takes out the first blocker right here. And then coming around, watch the block, the running black. Etienne does not get the block, gets just a piece of him. Running back, you got to square up on those blocks that caused the sack. That's it. Crisscross inside linebackers. I mean, George has been doing that for 25 years. Yep. And they've been struggling for sacks or havoc plays, whatever you want to call it, but. They still don't give up a lot of points. And Mertz is in a little bit of trouble again. The ball is out again. And George has got it. Marvin Jones, the linebacker. Scrambling up in the pocket. You have to have two hands on the ball. Mertz just in his right hand, carelessly in the middle of the pocket. This can happen. Comes up, just takes right out of his right hand. I think it was Ingram Dawkins, right? Number 93, they got his hand on it. Or maybe his own lineman. Let's see. There you go. You got it. Boy, takes it right out of him. He really had more than just one hand on the ball, to be fair, looking at it the second time. But as he moved up in the pocket, coming around, just one hand. And boy, those guys are good at that. If you go to practice, that's all you see them do now. Right. They come around the edge and they go for the football. I said to Kirby Smart yesterday, have you ever had a season like this where there aren't any fumbles caused? And he said, I can't put my finger on it, but sometimes they come in bunches. Well, Ingram Dawson just put his finger on it right there. No doubt. First down at the 11. Kendall Milton. And remember, a couple. Remember that stat you threw at me from 2021? They better be careful. They're going to have one just like it yep. right here. It could be an implosion here in the second quarter for Gator fans. Let's see if the Gator defense can force a field goal. It seems like it's almost mandatory here. The Gators threw the first punch, but since then. It's rat-a-tat-tat. -tat. Yep. Four wideouts. Dylan Bell was in the backfield, and that comes over in a slot, so it's an empty set. From the nine, Carson Beck, quarterback draw. Beck. Oh, he went the wrong way. Well, he still got it inside the five to the three. He did. Effective play, good call, spread it out, good time. Watch it, don't, you don't think he should have gone left on this play right here. What if he just he stopped right there? Oh, it just looked like <laughs> if he went that way, he had it, didn't he? Oh, well. We're all not great runners, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're down at two. You know he's just going to kick himself when he watches it. Sure. That. 
So it's third down and two. And Georgia can get a first down at the one yard line. And we're going to have a timeout. The entire offense will walk over around Coach Smart. Florida, as Gary said, through the first punch. Georgia. Well, we had to figure out a place to replace Brock Bowers. Oscar Delp with a one-handed catch. Lad McConkey, he was in our opening montage of being a big part of the Georgia offense. And always the grand game of Dejon Edwards with a 20-yard touchdown run. So everybody's filling in for number 19 and doing pretty well at it. And now Georgia faces a third down and two just inside the three-yard line as Brock Bowers shields the sun. And... Decision time, maybe if they don't get the first down or the touchdown for Kirby upcoming. And you knew, you know, Kirby and Mike Bobo were discussing the two play calls if they don't get it on this one. Lucky and dealt two tight ends. The pitch. Edwards trying to get that first down and he won't get there. So now what's the decision? It would have looked like if they would have given the jet sweep that time that they had it, did they not? It looked like, oh, if you hand this off, you can get to the outside with Bell. Good defense by the Florida defense. Can they turn it to their side? Because it's maybe a half yard left. Kirby has decided to go for it. It's not two yards. No. They don't go on fourth down very often. They're going here. Dejon Edwards, touchdown, Georgia walking in. Didn't get it the first time, he got it that time. Well, give it to that inside that offensive line. Cedric Van Pran, Tate Ratledge. They ran right over the veterans that time. And he kind of tiptoes, tiptoes. Oscar Delp gets a great block on that play, pushing his end man right past it. Delp coming through with the one-handed catch and now with the block. Extra point coming up. And it's up and good. Yeah. Georgia has scored three touchdowns in the last four minutes and 50 seconds. The two replacement players, Oscar Delp and Lawson Lucky, look at the job they do over here. Both get their blocks. Delp slams his man, and Lucky cleans it up. Good job. Second touchdown for Dejon Edwards. Georgia rolling right now, 24 to seven, and number 19 says that's rock chalk. Wow. It's not just the start of basketball season in Lawrence. Thanks, Zuck. Here, 24 unanswered points by the Georgia Bulldogs. So with 10 and a half to go in the quarter, we talked about the game a couple years ago. It was closer to the end, obviously, of the second quarter, but look at this. Three touchdowns in five minutes and 49 seconds. And it and really involves two turnovers in there. The short yard is playing yeah. down, and then the actual Fumble. turnover. Mm -hmm. Yep, they were short trips, but they all add up to the same amount of points. Right now, Florida, after that great opening drive, needs an answer right here. Well, they need to throw quick passes. They're not able to hold up very long in the passing game, but number one and number three got to get the ball again. Johnson lost it a yard there on the ground. Ricky Pearsall has one catch. Remember the way they started out going to Eugene yep. Wilson? I mean, it was a nice script to start the game, but now they got to figure out a way to get the ball back in those two guys' hands. Zion Loeb made the tackle on Johnson for a loss. And they give it back to him at the line of scrimmage. So second down and 10. They fake the end around. Merce has to throw it away. Boy, Marvin Jones right in the middle of that screen. Reading his keys, doing what he's supposed to do. Don't get mesmerized by all the action, the play action. And the outside linebacker forces Florida to throw it away.
Boy, the turnover on downs led to the rushing touchdown by Dejon Edwards. Four plays later, another score for Dejon from the two. Now it's third and ten for a team that has a trouble with third down conversions and Mertz in trouble again, and he's going down again. And it was holding on the play as well as Austin Barber, the left tackle, the guy who spoke that Georgia has to go through us. Well, they just did. Michael Williams went through everybody. Holding well, on the offense, number 58. That penalty bill will be declined. Fourth down. Austin Barber against Michael. Well, look at him hold him. And he still helps at least gets half the sack on the yep. play from the outside. Gave him a little bulletin board material, right? <laughs> you know, we play SEC ball like they do. I think we got some guys. 24-0 is great, but they got to come play us. Well, they are doing so. And speaking of 24, it's 24-7. to And they've got a punt. Makai Muse is back for Georgia after kind of twisting his leg on his last punt return. He waits back inside his own Watch 40. Out. And they got it. With a block punt, and did he pick it up in time? No, I think it landed out of the field for a safety. safety. Yes, and then bounced back in. Noel Aguero, I think. It was. That's who I thought I had. Everything going haywire for the Gators, and everything going right for Georgia. Took out the snap. Good. One step. Beautiful job of laying out. Yep, that's who it was, Aguero. And it bounces into the white. And I think it come I think it came back in. That's what I saw the first time. I lost it in the yep, shadows, to I be too, honest. <laughs> pretty sure either way they didn't corral it. It's gonna be two points. Right, it went right behind the pylon. And Georgia with the block punt and the safety adds to its lead. A little bit of everything. Georgia winning football. That's been the story. How they've strung these 24 straight SEC games together. They beat you in a lot of different ways, right? Yep. All three phases right now working for them. Their defense, it's always excellent. Their offense that we wondered about without Brock Bowers, their All-American tight end. Everybody's picking up the slack. And now the free kick coming up as Crawshaw has to go right back out there. 26 unanswered Georgia points. And Muse and Lad McConkey, the dual return men, back around the 20. So Crawshaw, you know that's always in your head. At least they're not going to have a rush here. You know it's a free kick, but it might be a little shaky on this one. It's fun. It is. It backs everybody up. McConkey takes around the 11 yard line. Lad McConkey, and he'll be taken down at the 26. With nine minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the half. The Bulldogs graveyard with Halloween just around the corner. Well, it goes all the way back in the regular season to three years ago. And here are the victims. And in the dog graveyard, 24 straight, including Vandy over there on the right two weeks ago. They're trying to add to it. The zombie of the Gators might be number 25 if they don't find a way back into this thing. I always think any time they put any step up, stand up and it says SEC history, you know it's really it's good. It's pretty good, yeah. And it probably involves Alabama as having a <laughs> longer streak. First down. Kendall Milton. And Milton breaks into the secondary with a stiff arm. He's across the 40-yard line. Well, here's the play right here that Kentucky was running to hurt this Florida offense. Watch him pull and gash him. This is Gap running inside, kick out, and just keep going. That is the offense that Kentucky coming into this game. The scary part Georgia fans felt was if Kentucky can run it that good, won't Georgia? So far, it's been a little bit of everything for Georgia. Yeah, pick up a 16 for Kendall Milton has been banged up at times. That's his... Best run in a while. Back quick out to McConkey. Threw some traffic and out to about the 49. Georgia on the move again at the eight and a half minute mark of the quarter. Quickly we'll test your knowledge with today's Aflac trivia question. Georgia ranked number one on the AP poll for the 19th straight week. Which two schools had had longer streaks at number one? 
Yeah, to tuck that in there on you because everybody's going hurry up here. McConkey now filling in or helping fill in for what Brock Bowers usually gives you. Three catches, 65 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Milton run, dropped for a loss. Run blitz that time. Good to call that time on the defense. Offense, a defensive coordinator, Austin Armstrong, first year. Feels like it's going to be a run. Comes off the edge. Too many guys. Uman Mielin made the tackle. First four possessions for Georgia. Pretty good. But again, a couple of short trips in there, courtesy of their defense. Short fields. Dog fans enjoying what they're seeing here. Third down and five. Dejon Edwards back in at tailback. He has a little conversation with Carson Beck and McConkey in motion across the field. Here comes a heat in a hurry. Beck throws incomplete. That was intended for Ra Ra Thomas. And it's fourth down. Yeah, Jason Marshall in good phase that time. Forced a perfect throw. Late hit, but he was quickly getting rid of it and kind of tossed down. Nothing real serious. Georgia leaves their offense out there on fourth down and five. Yeah, trying to draw them off sides. I can't imagine. They're just going to say, can we get a cheap five yards? Doesn't matter where we pump from. Beck just keeps his eyes on the sideline. As the play clock goes down under five. And now the timeout. I don't think they took nope, the timeout. I guess not. They just took the flag. Just take a five yard penalty again where they punt from is really meaningless. Kirby's telling Carson Beck, says, we don't want to get greedy. <laughs> Beck, the Jacksonville natives going, let's keep going. It's going pretty good. The midway point of the second quarter. Brett Thorson will make his first appearance. Well, if Florida wants to make this a football game, this is the time when they get the ball. They need to put some points on the board. Georgia has not allowed a punt return this year. Orson will try to keep that intact. And they will as it bounces inside the 20, goes out around the 18 yard line. With 7 17. Georgia spotted the Gators seven. And in every phase, they've been humming ever since. 26 to 7. One to three, Oregon here. It's all Georgia. 26 to 7. Earlier we asked you the Aflac trivia question, which was Georgia ranked number one for the 19th straight week. Which two schools had longer streaks at number one? USC with Pete Carroll, 33. And that great Miami team in the early 2000s went 21 straight weeks. It's a lot of being number one. It's a lot of number one. First down. For the Gators. And it's uh, Trevor Etienne, rather, a pickup of a couple. So, what do you do if you're Florida? I mean, you got a quarterback who's hot, but your two tackles are struggling. Yeah. Two strip sacks from the left side, a sack on the last play from the right side. I mean, they're coming at you from both angles. You know, when those edge rushers are getting and beating your tackles one on one, now you got to give them help, and then you don't send guys out. I mean, it's hard to get guys open. What do you do if you're Florida? You're Graham Mertz, you got to get it out quick, that's for sure. Georgia had had trouble sacking the quarterback, not today. Mertz going to go deep. Nobody home out there as it lands at the 40 yard line. Ricky Pearsall, and it looked like he was sort of directing, like Ricky, just keep going, keep going. Second quarter is just blown up on Florida. Yeah, I remember that play at the end of the first quarter. Started at the second quarter. They tried to do the short yardage pass, didn't work, and then it's all been uphill since then, right? Yeah. Or would it be gone? I'm not sure. Either way, it's not going. Georgia scored 26 straight points. I know that part. Yep. Third down and eight. Mertz running for his life again. Gets it out to Wilson in the flat, but he's just going to get back a little bit past the line of scrimmage unless they call a late hit. And apparently not. So Mertz looked left, but Lassiter, corner for Georgia, did a good job early. No release here by the receiver. He's Trevor. He's trying to get it rid of the ball quick. 
nothing gets stoned and then he has to get out of the pocket. Kamari Lasseter, good job by the outside. Man-to-man -man coverage, nowhere to go with the ball, and Mertz has to bail. He can't stay in there. He's just, you know, giving up three sacks. Kroshoff standing around the same spot as where he had the last one stuffed back into the end zone on fourth down and eight. Part of the Georgia barrage of points with that safety. Let's see if they switch it up and put the return on this time. And Muse backpedals to about the 22 and collar down right there. Yeah, nice I don't, job. I don't think that's a horse collar. No, though. I didn't mean to say it right. that way. I, I understand. It's but I, he, part of his collar. He got him. <laughs> he was in front of him. Uh, yeah, close. What do you do on that? I mean, is that you can see that the Georgia bench throws the horse collar. You do wonder now if you watch it the second time. If he doesn't grab him, he's past him. Gene Steratore, we try to keep Gene busy <laughs> with things like this. Keep me a little busy. Yeah, guys, the first hand starts at the side, but then you clearly see two hands under the collar, quick, abrupt pull backward. By rule, that's a horse collar foul, in my opinion. Yeah. He was in front of him at first. I said, you can't horse collar a guy in front, but he's quickly got behind him, didn't yeah. he? Georgia starting at the 20 yard line. Dejon Edwards just keeps on rolling for 10 or 11 more on a first down. Well, much like Vanderbilt two weeks ago, Dejon came to play. He sure did. Had his career best in that football game, running the ball. He was, oh, there possible face mask miss right there. About three of them. One. Yeah, Cam two. Jackson reached out. <laughs> yes. And three. <laughs> we always wonder up here, how could somebody not be watching the running uh, back uh, and uh, see that, right? <laughs> at any rate, it's a first down at the 31. McConkey in motion will settle in on the left side. Beck looking that way. Carson back airing it out for McConkey. Just overshot him. Let's check in with Jenny. Well, Carson Beck's history with his rivalry, it dates back to when he was just six years old attending the games as a Gator fan. Now, growing up in Jacksonville initially directed Beck's childhood dreams to Gainesville. He committed to play baseball at Florida before realizing that football at Georgia was his destiny. Now, Beck, he has played at the stadium once before. It was a peewee football game at 11 years old. But today, guys, at 20, he's leading the charge in red. Yep. They lost that game, by the way, when he was 11. Right now, he's up 26 to 7. Here's a throw to Bell. Receiver screen. He got one block and made something out of it. Yep, that's enough. That's what you're looking for on second down. You got second and ten. You go for the home run shot on first down. Don't get it. Okay, get me in a comfortable position for third down. And good job by Bell reading that block and getting in position for third and what five just less than five. Austin Lucky got out there. The tight end, the second tight end other than Oscar Delp. It almost doesn't need to be said, but Lawson Lucky was a five star, too. Exactly. <laughs> so a whole bunch of those out there. <laughs> and Florida takes a timeout with 414 remaining first half. All Georgia right now. Tonight at 7 Eastern on CBS Sports Network, catch a man, uh, Mountain West matchup. Big one, undefeated 19th ranked Air Force. Goes for its seventh straight Ram Falcon trophy against Colorado State. Here on the banks of the St. John's, Georgia 26 to 7 lead with a third down and six upcoming. Carson back throws. Lad McConkey's got a first down and he's got more. Well, we know Lad McConkey is going to get open. He's just a magician running his routes. Very difficult to cover in one on one. What George is hoping for long term is he doesn't tweak that back again. Yeah. They need him healthy. Got a flag down. After the play was over, there were multiple fouls against both teams. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number one on Florida and number 73 on Georgia. Those cancel the result of the play. It's fourth down. The man, the Allen, 
And Xavier Trust getting tangled up. Wouldn't it be first? First, don't think they don't get the play over. Wouldn't it be first down? Play is a first down. All right. There you go. He just waited for you to say that. Well, see, after I'd done doing this, I think I would want the way I've been going. I'd like to be an official in the SEC. I, I think you should. I think I could get yelled at as an official. I think you could. Yeah, I think you could get booed no matter what you do. <laughs> Quarterback Lions announcer, same thing, right? <laughs> First down at the 44. They down Edwards. Man. Boy, what a show he's putting on. He's dragging Gators oh. with him. And the show that offensive line is now putting on. I think they want the Joe Moore Award this year. Yeah, and I, you know, considering the way this time Cedric Van Pran wearing number 77 gets the key block on the middle linebacker that time, Williams. Easy play. 18 yard pickup. For Edwards and now Beck got dropped for a loss by the man Mielin. Mielin that time zone keeper should have given it. Confident Georgia team. They've had games when we've had them where they had to play from behind against South Carolina and Auburn. And then they put it on Kentucky and everybody said oh that's the Georgia team we've been waiting to see. They spotted Florida a touchdown in this game and have scored 26 straight since. And remaining undefeated teams. We mentioned Air Force playing tonight. Georgia. And we did have one team fall. Oklahoma taken out by Kansas in Lawrence, as Zook told you a couple of minutes ago. And he'll more on that. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. We're not even in November yet. A lot going to happen. Oh, yeah. But the schedule that everyone said for Georgia was so easy this year, or supposedly, has turned into anything but, because what they've got in front of them is a Missouri team that's lost only once and is off this weekend. They still have Tennessee left. Right now they're handling business against Florida Beck. Going deep, just off the fingertips of Dominic Lovett. Dominic Lovett. Did a nice adjustment to the ball here. He was covered, but he read it well. Watch him read the ball and kind of stops and jumps in front of the defender. Would have made a really nice play. Instead of keep running, you got to judge it quickly. He makes the judgment. Could have made the play. That would have been a nice one. Yep. Bryce Thornton was back there. Coverage. Lovett came in with 31 catches. Has one today. If they don't gain any yards here. It'd be about a 53-yard field goal. I don't know oh, if they're fresh. What are they doing? That. Are they going to go for it? No. You're going to try to draw them off. They still got timeouts. Yeah, they'll use it this time. And they take one of the two with 159 remaining. So a couple opportunities where they came up to a fourth down situation, gave it the look that they were thinking about it. And maybe they just took the flag, not the timeout again. I, th I thought Kirby took the time out. I thought so too. Delay a game. Yes, not. Maybe he was late. Maybe he just wants to punt it. Doesn't want to get it one block late. So that'll bring out Thorson again. And his job would be to drop one in around the 10 yard line and not let Rick Ricky Pearsall get loose. Pearsall averaging about eight yards a return, his longest this year, 21. Muse was late to the party, and now Georgia's got their punt team ready. Dorson's kick bounces and goes out around, well, scooped up around the nine yard line, so did exactly what he was supposed to do. One thing with Kirby not taking the time out is he now can use them and force. Florida to punt. They've already blocked one. Yep. Coming up, I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, Geico halftime report. Adam Rick and BJ break down our first half and bring you the day's best highlights, including the top 15 Pac-12 clash between Oregon and Utah that Oregon was handling their business pretty well a few minutes ago. Coming up, Geico halftime report. Since that opening touchdown drive, when Graham Mertz was perfect five for five, Three yards and five drives.
not good. Yeah, interesting play calls here by Florida because if they throw an incompletion, Kirby will be able to use his two timeouts and have it a minute and a half left. Georgia with that offensive, uh, that defensive front shift that we see week in and week out. Some teams don't handle very well, causes false starts a lot of times. And they're going to have a run blitz here, but Johnson's going to run through it. Get it out to the 20, maybe the 21. Warren Brinson brought him down, but Montrell with a, one of his best games of the day on the ground. Clock moving at 135. Send Boardingham the tight end in motion. Mertz, deep middle, got it! Down to the 50 to Pearsall. Well, he had plenty of time to throw. Pearsall comes across the formation, kind of a constricted formation, bunch, good protection. Here it is. Pearsall goes clean across the field. Good coverage. Great throw, better catch. 29-yard pickup. Georgia now with a blitz on first down. Mertz has to get rid of it in a hurry. Incomplete intended for Johnson. Uh, Jackson, thank you, pardon, Khalil Jackson. And the Florida fans want an interference call on Tyke Smith. You are right that uh, Mertz had to get rid of that ball way before. I don't see anything that would warrant interference on that ball. Don't even know if it was catchable. Tyke, who leads Georgia in interceptions, coming in with four. And actually is third in the country in that capacity. Georgia has their blitz team in Jalen Walker in the game second and ten Mertz has to step up in the pocket and throw short and incomplete it was Jalen Walker coming around that time the outside again both tackles having problems handling that speed rush from Georgia that's going to bring up a third and ten with just over a minute to go Johnson will rejoin Mertz in the Gator backfield. Georgia. Almost a one head catch by Jackson. Lassiter said no. -uh. I'll tell you, Kamari Lassiter is doing a great job to the outside right now. For whatever reason, he is in the hip pocket of these receivers. Hand fighting, I think it's fair game. Both of them are fighting. Would have taken a perfect throw and uh, just outside. Interesting decision. Boy, if you give the ball back to Florida right here. Georgia, you mean. Georgia, excuse me. Fourth down and ten. Georgia still got two timeouts left. There's a whistle. Yeah, Billy Napier went down there. He's going to talk this one out. Called timeout just before the snap. Remember, they went on fourth and a couple of feet. That ended up being a Georgia touchdown. I mean, and at midfield, I don't know. Georgia gets the ball to start the right. second half. You don't want to give them at the 50 yard line here. We'll see what Billy Napier's decided on a fourth down and 10 with 58 seconds I, remaining. I think he's decided to punt it. I think you just got to trust your football team. You regroup and see if you can score three touchdowns in the second half. You can't give them the, field, the ball on the 50 yard line. Rashaw, remember, had one blocked that turned into a Georgia safety. Georgia's got the safe on. Yeah, they do. Got their whole defense out there. Yeah. Well, Georgia's just going to let this one go, and it's going to be down at the one yard line. So, good job that time by Crawshaw. He's excited. Take a look at the Dr. Pepper SEC standings. Georgia, perfect at 7 0 and 4 0 in conference play. Florida controlling their own destiny. Should they be able to upset Georgia, they would have the tiebreaker. But right now, that's not going so well. We mentioned Missouri, number 16 in the country, idle with a date with Georgia on CBS next week. So that's going to be another test in Athens for this Georgia team. But right now, they Looked the part of the number one team in the country. Just one last uh, note here. Only one timeout for Florida. Take a knee. They 
Florida will not be able to force a punt by Georgia here. Just don't do it in the end zone. Don't do it in the end zone. And they got just enough to give Carson Beck a little more knee room. So Georgia will have a more comfortable snap upcoming and then we'll head it to the locker room where Florida looks to regroup. Georgia looks to keep just doing what they're doing so what far. Look, what looks so promising for Florida, you know, first quarter they had plus 30 yards rushing, you know, and all of a sudden you look up there, four sacks, and they got a combined 22 yards, including the sacks rushing now. That offensive line, that was the question mark, right? Yeah. And it's become a question mark. The sacks, Georgia's offensive line, on the other hand, yep. making holes for Dejon Edwards, giving time to Carson Beck. And the first half of this rivalry comes to a close as Georgia scored 26 points straight after giving up the opening touchdown march to the Gators. And Georgia will get the football first to start the third quarter as well. 26 to 7 after spotting the Gators seven points here at Everback Stadium in Jacksonville. They scored 26 unanswered and they'll get the second half kickoff as well. Georgia leads the all time series. They've won five of the last six. The last team to beat Georgia in the regular season was Florida three years ago right here. But the Gators have got some ground to make up. Trey Smack has got it teed up. Makai Muse and Dylan Bell way back deep for Georgia. Georgia riding a 24 game winning streak and try to stay atop the polls with the college football rankings coming out on Tuesday. If they keep this up, they should, without a doubt, be number one, but we'll wait and see. Michigan might have something to say about that. Smack knocks it out of the back of the end zone. As we welcome you back to the booth, Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jenny Dell down on the field. Feels like this one could go one of two ways. Gators can kind of chomp down and try to work their way back in it, or Georgia's going to run away with it if they don't. I like your decision, man. It's a good read, by the way. Um, listen, you might say this game turned on that last play of the first quarter, then the short yardage play that didn't make it. But really, after that first drive, it's really been all Georgia. Yeah. Uh, the Florida team's having trouble blocking them in pass. And now what do you do? you got a quarterback that's hot, but you can't block him up front. Problems for Florida. What can they find? The perfect thing for them would be force Georgia three and out on this opening possession to start the third quarter. It would be a start, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Lad McConkie had a big first half in motion. This guy had a big first half, too. Dejon Edwards. Only about a two yard gain, but he part of our trends has had a sensational game for the second week in a row. Four rushing touchdowns in the last two, two against Vandy two weeks ago, two in the first two quarters today. Georgia getting their pass rush going four sacks. That's a trouble area for them this year, but it wasn't in the first half. And the miscues since that opening touchdown, like Gary said, everything's gone haywire for the Gators. Second down and nine. That's McConkey, and that's a first down. So we check in with Jenny Dell. Well, Coach said this game requires all three of their phases to play really well. They need to establish more balance and play more aggressive in the second half. He said as far as Graham Mertz goes, he wants him to be more effective out there, stay on schedule. And he said, of course, when you're playing a team like Georgia, second and long and third and long is not where you want to be. Well, second and short's where you want to be. Or third and shorts where you want to be back. It felt like McConkey made that first. I down. thought he did, yeah. Yes. And now they have it. There's so much for the three and out that Florida was hoping for. But they've got to buckle down and 
not let Georgia go on another scoring march of any kind. Has he seen many quarterbacks as comfortable as Carson Beck throwing the football? No. I mean, he just feels like he can throw it through any window right now. Bill and Bell switching sides, settles in. Dejon Edwards, little stutter step. Only got about a yard out of it, though. When you think about the effectiveness of this Georgia offense in particular, 11, I counted 11 players from last year's team that were contributors are not on the field today, you know, and they're still moving the ball. I mean, you go right down the list, there's player after player, three offensive tackles, a left guard, the, 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 you know, tragic death of Willick. I mean, they're just replacing one player after another. Beck throws a strike across midfield, first down. Dominique Lovett. And as Gary said comfort right uh, here. Comfort is having those guys up front. Van Pran did a nice job. He goes one direction and comes back in and helps on number one, Min Mi Ellen, as he comes around on the stump. Edwards takes it to the 45. Now it was Stetson Bennett for two years and two national titles, and that's this guy, Carson Beck. <laughs> I like I like the number comparison. It's pretty good. Remember that? You know, 2020 game when Stetson had that rough game and Kirby put his arm around him. Yeah. We talked about what a great job Kirby did of saying he's going to need him again. And boy, it produced two national championships. You know, I mean, that was a key moment of coaching by Kirby Smart. Trying to go for a third, which is unprecedented unless you want to go back to the 30s. And Minnesota. Kendall Milton. Jamari Lyons in on the tackle. Georgia will go hurry up, not allow the Florida defense to substitute here. On a third down and four. Back in the gun. Throws quick, had it batted down. And I think it was Jason Marshall who got a hand on it, number three. Had good call that time. Quarter cat off the hurry up. That's good coaching by Florida. Georgia goes hurry up and Florida is able to get in a blitz on the play. So Georgia got into Gator territory, but they did get the stop that they were looking for to open this third quarter. Well, the way you come back is one first down at a time and one score at a time. Let's see if they can for Florida put something together when they get the ball back. Thorson to punt Pearsall is down on the other end. Thorson trying to keep it out of his hands, knocks it to the right side. And Pearsall takes the catch at the five yard line. So the Gators have it back. They trail 26 to 7. Their offense going to work when we return number one in virtually every category except sacks <laughs> and forcing fumbles. Making up for it, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Coming from every different angle. Edge rushers, linebackers matched up against running backs. They got the whole package going. So Florida. Has the ball back. The bad news, they start at their own six-yard line. Pearsall in motion. Play action, the throws out in the flat. The boarding hand, the tight end, and he's got a first down. They're pretty high on this guy. They do. Young player, good athlete. Again, a little bit of motion, and then they run the little sneak by the tight end. Kind of a submarine look. Go behind the line of scrimmage and sneak him out. Got it out to the 20 and a first down. Georgia thinking about a blitz on the inside. Montreal Johnson runs right into Chambliss. That's their run blitz. They do so well. The first linebacker comes across and blocks on the inside of the lineman. Watch them come in here and just block the lineman, and then they just attack from there. And then that frees up the next linebacker, Damas Johnson, to make the play. That's exactly what they did in the first half. The same similar play, that cross over. Yep. London takes the shot, <laughs> and then his teammates clean up. Yeah, the first blitzer is sacrificing himself. Right. It's mission team. <laughs> That's right. Mission team, not yep. you. <laughs> there's a jet sweep, and Wilson's not going to get anything. Look at the same play by Tyke Smith, number 23, this time. Playing that nickel spot. Watch him take on the blocker and then bounce it wide and then actually cleans it up. 
Taki Smith having an all SEC type year, that's yeah. for sure. Ness told you earlier he leads the team with four interceptions, but that play right there is valuable. He was a freshman All American at West Virginia. And then sophomore year in All America before transferring to Georgia had some injury problems Here since. Here he comes. He didn't. Hurts. Four and three. Has plenty of time this time. What and what a play, knocking the ball away from Pearsall. It was him. I thought he was going to blitz for sure right there, and he didn't. It's a good thing. I thought they were going to go three on three and blitz him right there. The only thing he blitzed on was that pass yeah, they intended kept for two, Pearsall. <laughs> two high free safeties on this play. So everybody knows, remember, you're playing underneath. You can cut under every cut because you know you got two safeties behind you. You can gamble, and he makes the play. Yeah, that is two really good plays back to back by number 23. And that's knowing where your help is, too. Have two safeties behind you. You can gamble on the throw. Cross you out of punts. Had one blocked for a safety earlier. Georgia with a return on this time. And fair catch called for and taken around the 27 or 28 yard line by Muse. So Florida got their hands on it offensively, but could not do anything with it. They had the early lead. It's been all red and black since Georgia 26 to 7. Go down in Tuscaloosa, LSU and Alabama. That is a big next Saturday on CBS. And streaming on Paramount Plus. Carson back all day to throw. Fires on the run. Love it. Dominic, love it. Down the sideline. And out of bounds and around the 10. Great design of a play right here. Play action pass. Dominic Lovett, watch him. It looks like he's going to go across the field. But then he reverses himself. You go play action to give him time to do it. Just gets out inside then outside. That is a design play and love it. Does it perfectly. He's loving it right now. 45 yard pickup. Play action pass on first down and boy did they set up Mitchell on that one. Big play by number six. 55 yards. Down to the 17. Back under center. Gives it off to Kendall Milton who maybe got a yard. That's about it. Jack Pyburn was the first guy there to stand him up. When we talked to Kerber earlier when we covered him. He said, you know, Dominic and Ra Ra Thomas are still learning our system. Yeah. Second half of the season, we expect a lot more from them, and they are producing. Kirby Smart in his eighth year, two national titles, looking for win number 89 against just 15 losses over that eight-year span, seven and a half year span. Dejon Edwards hit from behind, but still falls forward. And the schedules upcoming for these teams that all control their own destiny. Florida's got to make up some ground fast. Arkansas, LSU, Mizzou. Mizzou, Georgia next week. And then Georgia finishes Ole Miss and Tennessee. Yeah, they, they, don't, they cannot clinch next week. It, it would be, even if they win, they would clinch the East against Ole Miss. That, one, that one's in Athens. Yep. Carson back. The streak to the corner. Knocked away. Incomplete intended for Ra Ra Thomas. Third down play. Ra Ra Thomas does a nice job. He's not going to get the ball. Jason Marshall with great coverage. So what does he do? He makes sure that no one else does. Reaches it out there. Tries to get it with one hand. But Marshall in perfect phase. Hey, that was closer than it looks. Really nice play on the ball by both guys. And that'll bring out Peyton Woodring. He hit earlier from 22. This one will be from 32. The freshman out of a Carson Beck hole. And he's got it up and good. So the big play on that one, a 55 yard pass and run by Lovett. They settle for three more and are up 29 7. But after the opening touchdown by Florida, Georgia has not looked back. 29 to 7. Jared Zirkel to kick off for the dogs. Trevor Etienne and Jason Marshall wait back at the goal line. And they'll not be able to touch this one. 
Now it's time for our reliable connection presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. Here's Jenny Dell. Well, Brad, number 22 holds a deep significance to Khalil Jackson. Wearing that number before him, his grandfather, Willie Jackson Sr., his father, Willie Jr., and his uncle, Terry Jackson. The family, it has such a rich history with the program. Willie Jackson Sr. was the first African-American scholarship football player at Florida, and guys, he has a special vantage point here today. He's working security on the field here at Everbank Stadium. You know he's loving seeing his grandson not only play for his team, but also rep his jersey. Absolutely. khalil has got a catch today. He started off as a quarterback here and moved to wide receiver to get more playing time because he's a very good athlete, as his grandpa and dad and uncle all were. Georgia knocks that pass down. Come on, Dumas Johnson. The same play, crisscrossing the linebackers. One linebacker blocks. The next one comes around, cleans it up. Just a bit late by Leonard. Did not bump off in time, and Graham Mertz is going. I saw this early against Utah, but I'm starting to get nightmares about this. <laughs> could, could you please keep number 10 off? Yes. Here? That one play, that one guy blocks, the other guy makes the play. Here's Etienne in the open field, his best run. Out across the 40 to the 42. I thought Warren Brinson had a chance here, but once he did not make the tackle, number 97, I think that's him right there. Watch him come in, swipe, but not even close. 17-yard pickup for Trevor, whose brother, brother plays on this very same field for the Jaguars. And now it's a flea flicker. Mertz has to throw quick, but got it to Pearsall. And it's another Gator first down. Got a little something going here offensively. What a nice job by Graham Mertz here. How fast. He knows he's under pressure. As soon as he gets the ball, he goes, I got to get rid of this thing. I don't even know if he had the laces on that throw. He got it and got rid of it all almost in one motion. 26 yards to his best friend on the team, Ricky Pearsall. Those two hit it off immediately when Hertz got here as a transfer from Wisconsin. First down at the 32. Here's a slant. That's another good looking play. That's what they had going earlier to Eugene Wilson. He really is a good looking player, isn't he? I mean, he just comes in, plucks the ball out, seems to be in control on this slant pass, the slant pass again. Ball slightly behind, but he just reaches back and snags it. If you hear us say Eugene sometimes, Trey sometimes, it's Eugene Wilson the third. Most of the guys on the team call him Trey. At the end, stays in there. Behind Mertz as the Gators have worked it down to the 25 yard line. Oh, and first time all start. day. Yep. The shift got it, Hayden Hansen. False start. Offense, number 89. Five yard penalty, second down. They'd only had two penalties before that. Talked to offensive coordinator Rob Sale about this, and he said, We have worked really hard on this. We don't think we'll move, but you know. When you're up there and those big guys are <laughs> triggered, sometimes they just move. Georgia gets everybody with that. They do. At the five-minute mark, Florida trying to cut into the Georgia lead. At the 30-yard line, a little delayed give. FDN oh, nice trying move. to bounce it outside, but that's the speed of the Georgia defense. And Tyke Smith, who's having another great game really defensively. God. They are so disciplined, but he does know that he's got the speed of those guys coming from the inside, so he can play outside shoulder exactly the way he should. He doesn't have to gamble for that inside leg. He knows he's got help coming. No way. Etienne had nowhere to go but one way, the outside, because all the pursuit was coming from the inside. C.J. Allen, a true freshman linebacker, is the guy that sort of spit that outside, and that just shows you what Georgia keeps rotating guys defensively year in and year out and game in and game out. Clock running down a bit, as you see. Play clock. And we're going to have to hustle. Did they get it away? He did. I guess. Quick oh. slant. Wilson again. Ooh, he got drilled by Javon Bullard. That one was timed out, and this time Javon Bullard was looking for it. He had help inside on this play. He was going to oh. cover it. That one hurts. Yeah, and then Florida's got to go for this. 
Ooh, that is a veteran putting it on a freshman. And a totally clean tackle. He wraps up as well. Just doesn't throw his body. Brings his arms with him. Tyke Smith shaking up for Georgia. So we've got a break here with 337 remaining third quarter. And a Zaki Smith being helped off the field made a really nice play on the tackle that we said when the linebacker pushed it to the outside. But watch his face mask and going down, hit his head pretty hard right there. Right on the turf. And then when he got up, getting in position for the next play, he took a knee and they spent most of that I, I actually, looking at him. I actually think he played the next play. And then did and that. And then did that, yeah. yes. Daniel Sisvana will take his spot. They'll move some people around. I'm just talking about Tyke having an unbelievable season. Well, you got to give the ball to Graham Mertzer and see if he can throw a short pass. I mean, that's your best option. Fourth down. Wilson and Purcell are to the left. Fourth down and three. Low snap. Mertz handles it. Goes out in the flat. Nope. nope. Short at the end, brought down Dumas Johnson and Dalen Everett. Yeah, I tell you, this defense has a lot of good players. Okay, we get it. They've been recruiting really well for a lot of years, but they are disciplined and they follow their rules. And look at this tackle in the open field. They Dumas do Johnson. their job, and Jamon Dumas Johnson right here wraps up. That's a tough tackle. Him one on one in the field needs another two yards, and he makes the play. The finalist for the Butkus Award last year, and he's having that kind of season again. So, fourth down didn't work out again for the Gators, but they really had no choice at this point. There's only 18 minutes left in the game. Yeah. Graham Mertz went right all the way. He thought he had him. And remember the other side, both Wilson and Pearsall were and curious what it looked like on the other side. You're always wrong when you do that. Of course. <laughs> And George is going to throw anyway. Love it. And a nice open field tackle right there. And a loss of two. Jason Marshall with the hit. Three year starter. Jason Marshall reads this quickly. Nobody really blocking him on this play. I wonder if that was a buzz. I don't know if it was Ra Ra Thomas or LeVette at the time, but you would think he would have turned out and helped him. But Ra Ra was trying to take the other guy out. Yeah, that was a little one on one, and it didn't work. Lucky the freshman tight end switches sides. Back quick throw again, knocked down again. One. Jason Marshall again. Just like the hurry up on fourth down play prior. This is going to be another corner cat. Comes off the edge. Nice. Good elevation on that one, wasn't it? Absolutely. Done that a couple of times now. It's third down at 11. Georgia came in number two in the country in third down conversions at 57 percent. There's that seven man look last time they bailed out of this. Let's see if they come after him. Georgia with a trick bunch. They do to the left of Beck throws across his body and he got it to McConkey again. Lad McConkey little shift to the left still running. Big gainer for number 84. So what a great job Carson Beck did. He felt the pressure. He knew they were coming. Watch him by time by fading to his left. And then he lets it go. And then McConkey again. He just has the ability to find the hole. Sharp cuts. Doesn't round anything off. And then his yards after a catch. I mean, stop and go. Finds the space. 54 but, yards later. Injured earlier in the year. And boy, when he's a weapon. Imagine if they had 19 in there as a weapon. Yeah, six for 136 for Ladd. Now back to Deshaun Edwards. He's got a two touchdown day. And he gets it down to the 15 or just outside the 15. Let's check in with Jenny. Well, Coach mentioned that Ladd McConkey was having trouble stiffening up at halftime, so he told me that he just doesn't sit down. During half, he's on the bike, he's using heating pads, continually stretching and constantly moving. Good news is, he said thanks to that bye week, he came in feeling 100%, and he's looking good out there, guys. Well, he sure is. Definitely 100% day for him. 
Edwards that head on that time. Nice job by the Florida front. Tyreek Sapp made the tackle since Florida picked up Georgia. The last regular season loss for the dogs three years ago down here. Here's what's going on for the two programs for Florida two head coaches for Georgia two national titles and 40 and one and Amazing. 25 and one 40 and one. Amazing. I think Smart James is down. He given everything he got got hurt in warmups and he has played his heart out. Yep. They're rewrapping that knee brace. We'll see if he can come back when we come back. Jamar James helped off the field moments ago. Jamar James playing right here, this outside linebacker spot. When he fills, he gets hit and then he gets tackled, he gets the pile at the same time, but he actually hurt this in pregame. Right there. There. He twisted to go back, just getting loosened up, and he pulled his knee a bit. We didn't know if he would play. And yeah. then he's out here with a knee brace. I don't think he's, you know, it might be 70%. Now in the observation tent, meanwhile, Georgia's got a third down at four. In the red zone again. Jaden Hill has taken Shamar James' spot at the linebacker position. Georgia needs to get to the 13 to move the sticks here in the final half minute of the third quarter. And the lob to the corner, and it's a touchdown to Dylan Bell. Perfectly thrown ball by Beck. His second touchdown toss of the day. Well, he picked out exactly who he wanted to go to. Went right at Jalen Kimber, didn't he? Had one on one to the outside. It's a quick throw, little play action, but he knew right away he was going outside and perfectly thrown. Wins this route at the line of scrimmage. Carson back playing at his hometown and playing lights out right now. You know, Carson Beck in every game this year has had a minimum of 20 completions and at least 65% completion percentage in every game. Pretty strong for a first year starter, huh? Yep. Waited his turn and he was right to wait. A lot of good players to play with here. Woodring's extra point is up and good. Our AT&T 5G pylon cam will see Dylan Bell coming right across the goal line. Capping a 76-yard drive in six plays. Second touchdown pass of the day for number 15. To seven. Dylan Bell. Multi-purpose player running back. Wide receiver, return man at times. And Florida won't bring this out. Tomorrow, it's an NFL on CBS doubleheader. Early action highlighted by the Jaguars right from this stadium, but going on the road to face the Steelers. Later, marquee matchup between the Bengals and the 49ers. All starts at noon Eastern. JB and the guys on the NFL today. Tomorrow, the NFL's on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Final seconds here of the third quarter. As the Florida offense was huddled around their head coach, Billy Napier. And meanwhile, on the, the handshakes are going on on the sideline for Georgia with a 36 to 7 lead. Graham Mertz took Florida right down the field. If you just joined us on the opening drive to score a touchdown, and that's all they've put up on the board since. Wilson in motion. They'll keep it on the ground. Montreal Johnson, maybe four yards out of that, and that should bring the third quarter to a close. Well, as we said in the open, a lot of memorable plays, but a lot of lopsided games. Yep. Georgia's won five of the last six, and they're 15 minutes away from making it six out of seven. Right now, they're painting things red and black for the dogs. Quarter, the Georgia Florida matchup. All Georgia right now, after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive for the Gators, 36 unanswered points. And Florida second down and seven to open up the fourth. Montreal Johnson blasts his way off the left side. Montreal 
Down the sideline, biggest gain of the day for him and the Gators. Knocked out of bounds by Kamari Lassiter. You know, Lassiter was dropping back thinking it was a pass. He was looking to double-team Pearsall, and all of a sudden he turns back and sees somebody running with the football, and he comes back and ends up making the play. 48 yards later. Yeah, he's in motion one way, and then he has to come back the other way. So first down at the 24. Pearsall, they're going to try this end around thing again. Trey Wilson. And Wilson outrunning the defensive lineman gets a decent yardage out of it. Actually, Lassiter is doing his job here. He's depending on his front seven to make the running stop. He's going to cover Pearsall down the field. He thinks it's going to be a play, pass play, and all of a sudden, it's not. Georgia only gives up 91 yards a game on the ground. They gave up the biggest chunk of the day to Montrell on that run. And then the end around between Pearsall and Trey Wilson made them only three more. So second down and seven. At the dogs, 21. Mertz sidearms it out to Johnson again. He got a block. Montrell Johnson's got it down first and goal, Gators. Aiden Hanson, good block on that play. Goes out, shoves out the corner, and then Johnson shows his quickness as he catches. Watch Aiden Hanson, and then cuts it just before that pursuit from the inside could come from Dumas Johnson. A 16-yard pass and run. And it's first and goal for the Gators at the Georgia 5. Billy Napier, Mellon, his team got five wins. Got a good schedule in front of him. Wants his team, obviously, like what Kirby said, finish this fourth quarter. Pearsall in motion to the near side. The toss goes to Johnson the other way. Some congestion over there and a big hit by Malachi Starks. We've not called his name a lot today, have we? Probably is playing as good a safety as anybody in the country. And all we can do is talk about Tyke Smith and Javon Bullard. They got three of them that are playing as safety as well as you can play in the SEC. Second down to goal for Graham Mertz and the Gators. Johnson behind him in the pistol set as Pearsall crossing the field. They fake it to both of them and slings it to the corner to the tight end. Hayden Hansen touchdown Gators. I'll tell you, Georgia was all messed up on this play. Pearsall goes in motion. He goes out there. They don't know if he's going to be a wide receiver. He ends up coming back the other way, but Georgia was confused. Look at over here. Everybody's trying to figure out where to go, and Pearsall ends up coming back to them. Nobody covers them, and they still get the play to work. The big tight end in the corner. And now the Gators will go for two. Two for five on the year. Wilson, they fake it to him. Mertz had it knocked down. No good. And Azir Stackhouse got a big paw on the way. So they cut into the lead, do the Gators. The cap is 75 yard drive and six plays. The tight end from five yards out makes it 36 13. Resorts game recap. Dejan Edwards. Back-to-back -back games with two rushing touchdowns. Carson Beck, even though he doesn't have a 300-yard game yet, he's got two touchdowns. It seems like he's got a 450-yard game to me. Well, the way he's throwing the ball. So today. efficient. Really, the whole offense. You know, you look at this whole team. Started out with Brock Bowers, their go-to guy. When they were in trouble in past games, they'd look for number 19. Yeah. The ball is being spread out all across this offense. Lad McConkey's had a big day at wide receiver for Georgia. The other tight ends, the two younger guys, have had exceptional games. Georgia's defense until that last drive by Florida has been Georgia's defense. But you know, I go credit on, to the Gators, man. I go on some of these shows and everybody says, well, tell me who Georgia's beat. And I go, everybody. <laughs> yeah, everybody for the last three years. Yeah, I, all right, man. You know, I mean, tell me who's beat them first. You know, I just, okay, you know, haven't beat that big, you know, top 10 matchup, but <laughs> if you string that many wins together, you could be number one. Jenny at the end of the quarter talked to Kirby Smart. 
coach as a collect group, how do you take advantage of every single rep in the fourth? You got to keep playing. I mean, we're a four-quarter team. We believe we're the best conditioned in the fourth quarter, and the only way to do that is to go play and execute. So we'll do that this quarter. Thank you. Thank you. A little bit of an issue with Jennings Mike, but you get the drift from Kirby. They are well conditioned and they have proven that week in and week out. And it's now a, it's time to finish things with 12 and a half minutes to go. Get the feeling that last touch of my Florida keeps Carson Beck in the game, doesn't it? Yeah. And Kendall Milton, and he runs out for a first down. Again, that offensive line running to the right side. Florida felt they could handle the tight end. Oscar Delt, number four, gets the block. Handles him in Number one on the edge gets around to the strong side. If you've been watching number four do his imitation of number 19 today, Brock Bowers, they're virtually the same size. In fact, Oscar Delt might be on an inch taller than Brock Bowers. Rosemary Jack Saint on a quick toss. <laughs> Jack Saint goes, you know, on this short pass, the line was supposed to come up and clean everybody out for him. <laughs> and there's Brock, and you just saw Oscar Delp. If you really put his jersey on, you wouldn't know the difference, but there's a difference between Brock Bowers and just about anybody else in the country. Well, Oscar Delp will get his opportunity to show sure. what he can do next year or maybe in a, the next three, four, five, six games. Yeah. We'd all like to see Brock Bowers play again this year. But we would understand if he doesn't. Absolutely. He's given everything he could give for the last two and a half years and two national titles. And a Mackey Award as the tight end best in the nation. Another good run. This time well, by Kendall Milton. To me, that's the first uh, you know, Mike Bobo trademark toss right here. That's the staple of the Georgia offense from years. They did it for my formation. It's the first one we've seen so far in this game. Mike Bobo, former Georgia quarterback, longtime assistant. In the red hat right next to you. And now the clock is Georgia's friend, and so is the scoreboard. So we work our way down to 10 minutes. Milton to midfield. One more recap on this offensive line for Georgia. Remember, they lost their two starting tackles from a year ago. Then Amarius Mims, the five-star right tackle that filled into the national championship game. He goes also. They just have more players step up. Ernest Green on one side. Xavier Trust moves from guard to tackle. They just are rotating a lot of good football players on that line. That is dealt in motion. And they're going to throw it to him. Delp, <laughs> right on cue almost. <laughs> he even runs a little bit like Brock Bowers. Why wouldn't you, right? You practice with him every day, see how he does it, the way he turns up. West and Forsyth High School in Cumming, Georgia. As Gary said, another one of those five-star guys. Two catches for 31. Play fake, Beck loads, fires again, a strike Man. down to the 22-yard line. C.J. Smith this time. Yep, and I'll tell you, this quick release, we talk about Carson Beck, all the good things he does. But watch how quickly when he sees the receiver here, he can deliver the football. Beck, it's gone. So that's, that's, that is the way you do it when you can quarterback. He can feel that pass rush coming on. He's over 300 yards now. As I said, it seems like he's got 400 because he's been... Pretty accurate today, 301 and a couple of touchdowns. <laughs> That's a good look. <laughs> First down at the 22. Dejan Edwards. Amazing. Down to the six. Some guys can just feel the game of football. I said it last time we did one of their football games. 
it's not just his vision. It's not his footwork. It's everything. He just understands football, where the pursuit is coming, how to be patient, how to set up his blocks. Really, really comfortable Remember, runner. First couple of weeks of the season, they really didn't have him, and then he came yeah. back in the South Carolina game we did. We said, well, this should make a difference in the Georgia ground game. <laughs> it has ever since. As we hit the midway point of the fourth quarter at a first and goal. Eighth play of the drive coming up, which chewed up five minutes. Kendall Milton comes back in, gives Dejan a breather. First and goal from the seven. Milton down around the three. Georgia looking to go over that 40 point mark. Never beaten Florida by 20 plus in three straight seasons. They're on the verge of that. They came in number seven in the country in scoring at 40.1 a game. And they look like they're going to keep pace if they keep this drive going. Using some clock here as Carson Beck keeps them in the huddle. Just to note, Monroe Freeling is number 57 is in at right tackle this whole drive, giving Xavier Truss a blow. Second to go. Milton driving, driving. He's really close, but not in. Cam Jackson held on for dear life, all 366 pounds of him to try to bring Milton down. Cam Jackson was a difference, a major difference in that Tennessee game for this Florida defense. He really handled the center and the two guards for Tennessee very well, slowed that running game down. Hasn't been as effective. We haven't called him that much, but he's up against maybe the best center in the SEC, yeah. Cedric Van Pran. Stepped up a little in class yes. against Van Pran, who's wearing number 77. Seven, seven for Devin Willock, the teammate they lost back in a car crash in January. There he is, the center, and one of the best, as Gary said, right there, third down and goal. Kendall Milton bounces backward in touchdown, Georgia. Kendall Milton for the score, his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. I think this is really good play calling, too. You know, everybody's touched the ball here. Kendall Milton's turn. You know, they just kept getting the push. The legs kept going. The all, whole offensive line, they didn't they didn't want stalemates. They kept pushing it right into the end zone for a high five. Well, I don't want I don't want to take too many high no. fives from Mike Bobo. You could break a finger. But have one more guy on the injury list, the grad <laughs> assistant sitting next to Mike Bobo. <laughs> Georgia looking for point number 43. And it's up and perfect. So just what Georgia wanted to do there, getting the ball, is go on a time-consuming drive. Six and a half minutes to go 75 yards in 10 plays. Looks like it's a dog day for Harry and boom, Uga 11. Doesn't even have his jersey and his collar on. He's going all on natural today. Dr. Pepper, Ford, and by Pizza Hut. Some of our crew took in the beach a little bit. You know, we work hard, we play hard. <laughs> Great job by our CBS our, crew, as always. Yep. Nice spot right there. Don't forget later, well, coming up in a couple minutes probably, play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. I have a feeling it's going to have to do with Georgia in some capacity. <laughs> and fair catch called for and taken by Wilson. So 5.57 remaining for Graham Hurts and company. We take a look at our four game changer. Yeah, they did it with everybody, didn't in this game. We did it in the open. We go, first of all, will the tight ends come through? They came through. Will Deshaun Edwards come through? He came through. <laughs> and can he find Lad McConkey when he needs him? Not only did he find him, he produced two big ones. Yes. Including that touchdown where he put the brakes on and headed back the other way. And of course, it all comes from that offensive line and a, and a quarterback who feels, again, I think he feels like right now, I can throw it to anybody anytime I want. Graham Mertz is wishing he could feel that same way as he airs one out long, incomplete, intended for Khalil Jackson. 
So Graham who had back to back weeks where everything went well including a 10 point come from behind win over South Carolina in their last outing but today not so much. That's the center that they just got back. Nick walking and they were excited to get him back to help stabilize their offensive line. And they're working on his right leg. Yeah, he's only really played a couple games this year. Very frustrating. Yeah, that's the way you feel if you're a Gator fan right now. He's tapping him on the shoulder. It'll be okay. <laughs> to both Georgia and Florida's general scholarship funds. Yeah, this is the part of the game where he's, Billy Napier's keeping his starters in the game. You just don't want an injury here. You know, Persall, Mertz, Wilson. We've already lost McLaughlin already, your center. He's got to be careful. Here's Wilson. Georgia stretches it out again with that speed. And no gain on the play. As Nylon Green made the stop. It's not like George, you know, we looked at it real quickly. We were talking a little bit more about Georgia at that point, but, you know, Florida's schedule in front of them. You know, they're LSU. They, yeah. They've got Florida State yet. You know, Missouri now. That looked like a game. Oh, big deal, Missouri. But uh, now yeah, at deal. Missouri, you know, that's going to be a tough one. The Gators 6-7 and seven in the last two years. And you know, they need a couple victories. they got to get bowl eligible yet. Mertz looks right, comes back to the left of the side-on throw to Pearsall. Pearsall, good speed down the sideline, and lays a lick at the end of it in front of the Georgia bench at the five-minute mark. Screen is set up both sides. He can go either way. He chooses to go to Pearsall. Good blocking down seal by Trey Wilson that time. Springs and Pearsall finds that space kind of like McConkie, doesn't he? He yep. knows where to go. Kind of guys you can depend on as a quarterback, without a doubt. Is C.J. Allen's down out there? Yeah. yeah. And he's played quite a bit in the second half. Yes. This is the stage of the game where on both sides you don't want exactly. anybody getting hurt in a game that's out of control as far as the scoreboard's concerned. Freshman, true freshman out of Barnesville, Georgia. In the play right here, blitz from CJ from the middle linebacker spot. Kind of gets caught up with Jake Slaughter, the center that's in the game. I don't know if it's a pulled muscle or his left knee, but you felt it real early in the play. Kind of grabbed his left hamstring yeah. area or something. Clock running, four and a half to go. As Trayon Webb, the true freshman running back, getting some time here. So the Georgia fans are going to have a big time in the old town tonight. A lot of them, both sides have left and started already. Yes. Well, they started on Thursday. <laughs> well, they're con continuing right <laughs> to now. To be continued. <laughs> out in the parking lot. <laughs> Don't miss the series premiere of Lawman Bass Reeves streaming November 5th exclusively at Paramount Plus. I'll be watching that that's one. You, that's yeah, you. That's got you written all Absolutely. Over. Third down and short, and they pick up the first down. Florida, Gary was talking about their schedule. Yeah, they, they, the game they really want to win now, and it's a key one, is Arkansas. Because then after that, they got some real tough ones. On the road at OSU, on the road at Mizzou, and then the Knowles, the number four in the country to wrap things up. Last year was a six and seven year and three and five in the SEC for Billy Napier in his first season. High hopes coming in today with a three and one mark in the East to hope to try to pick off the number one team in the country and move into the driver's seat on the road to Atlanta or the drive to Atlanta. Not going to happen though. As George is up 30 right now with just under three to go. Two coaches who worked on the same staff at Alabama. One from Chatsworth, Northwest Georgia, grew up the son of a coach. One from South Georgia, grew up the son of a coach. Two guys that are friends. 
And one having great success with two national titles and one trying to rebuild the floor of the program. That was a good throw and catch and nice move by Frazier's and a flag down. Yeah, I, th I thought in the secondary that Georgia had a hold on the ball with the slot receiver called before the ball was thrown. I think on the slot. Holding on the defense number yeah. eight. That penalty is declined. Results of the play is a first down. A lot of people coaching in this league that passed through Alabama. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Here's a couple of them. On uh, that team picture, Billy up on the top right, Kirby down lower side, and the Constance, the guy in the middle, who we'll <laughs> see next week against LSU in Tuscaloosa. Should be a fun one, that LSU offense. A little night game at Bryant Denny next week. Still to come on the U.S. Army postgame show, Adam, Rick, and BJ will put a bow on this one and bring you the day's best highlights, including a Kansas upset of Oklahoma. And the uh, Oregon Utah game was big. I lost track of how that one is, but I was just about ready to say, put one of my notes towards the end of the game if we had something to talk about is remember Georgia and Oklahoma were scheduled to play each other, and by not playing each other, they both are undefeated. At no, stop. That, that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> now they'll play each other in years to come. Mertz, nice throw, and Ricky Pearsall. Cartwheels inside the five, first and goal, Gators. David Daniel Sissom on that time, number 14, comes up. Nice, and I see Mertz, the ability he has. I mean, he can just get rip that ball off from a lot of different positions, and David Sissom comes up and makes another. We've seen some good tackling in this game. No doubt. Pearsall gets it to the five-yard line. Wilson in motion. They fake it to him. They go straight ahead to the other freshman. And did he get there? They called it in. Touchdown. So some of the future of the Gators, this guy in the backfield, Trey Wilson, the wide receiver spot. So do we say with this lead that it's close enough and just say it's a touchdown? <laughs> Depends on if you got dinner reservations or not. I don't know. Well, I don't, but it still looks oh, I don't either. enough. <laughs> And it's right on the line. Five yard run. Trayon Webb, Jacksonville native, too. Wow, what a beautiful moon over the St. John's. Can't quite tell if the nose of the football was over when his elbow hit or not. This is probably the best look. I say he broke the plane. I do too. I'd say close enough he broke the plane. I think even the fans that are left going close enough, I think everybody thinks. Close enough. I got a cooler outside. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to look at it. Gene, with this score, would you ever consider close <laughs> enough? Gary, I think I really love the fact that you set that one up with close enough. I'm going to give him the score. <laughs> now you are going to be an official whenever you decide to retire, Gary. I want you on my crew. He looks great in stripes. I can see that. Yeah, right. The right ones. Close enough. <laughs> Again, Webb. Uh. Uh, no, guys, like the it's front in. nose of the football. The ball's not perpendicular. It's leaning toward the goal line to me. And when the, when the backside hits, I think the front nose, I feel like the front nose broke that plane of that goal line. And, and in the words of Gary Danielson, close <laughs> enough right there. Right there. Yeah, Let's give give it to I like it. I like it. Well, Georgia's defense might not like it, but I think that should be the call. We'll let a replay official, Stan Murray, Tell Matt Laffler <laughs> and the stadium is about. I was just thinking back back in the day when I had to take care of the kids and Christy would say, all right, they can't go outside till they get all their homework done. <laughs> and I'd have them for about an hour and I'd go, they'd show and they wouldn't have done it. Go, that's close enough. Go ahead. Close enough. Go out. You got two pages left. Yeah, that's all right. We'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Beltran certainly is hoping it's a touchdown. And the <laughs> review continues. Here we go. After a review, the runner did not break the plane of the goal line. Therefore, the ball be placed inside the one yard line. It's second down at that spot. I, I wish people could see the look on your face. No, right I just, you know what I was really thinking in my head is what if he came out and said close enough? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Oh. Well, here we go. We got a minute 35 to go. It's second down and goal. I hope they give it. Yes. on Webb, please. Too. Please leave the kid in the game. There's some spooky things going on yeah, here. He's, he's out there. All right. And another bad spot, even if he didn't get in. <laughs> Should be about close six inches closer. <laughs> All right, Trayon or Mertz or Trayon pushing Mertz. Touchdown. Spun him in. So the guy that maybe should have gotten it gets the push on his quarterback that does get it. Right now, Billy Napier is going, we should have run that play earlier in the Ooh, game. Yeah, right? no kidding. So now we officially have it as a 75 yard drive at 12 place. Graham Mertz third rushing touchdown of the season. Trey Smack with the extra points. And makes it look more respectable on the scoreboard at 43 to 20. Gators not quitting for Halloween. Today, Florida had some trick plays that didn't turn out to be treats, and that's kind of how Georgia came from seven down to where we are right now, 43 to 20. News and notes, Kansas has handed Oklahoma their first loss. Amazing job that Kansas program. Lance Leopold on. Yep, no kidding. Florida State still unbeaten. The only 8-0 teams along with Michigan and Liberty. Air Force playing tonight. Uh, actually, game, no, it's about two minutes from now on CBS Sports Network. And we're going to see Brock Vandergriff in at quarterback here in final minute 20. Take over for Carson Beck. And won't have to do much except that. But he is taking a couple of snaps here in this rivalry game. Carson Beck, the Jacksonville native, who played his high school ball 18 miles from here, has helped Georgia put up the most points against Florida since the early 80s. Man, oh man. Amazing. The contribution of all the guys that we talked about in the open three and a half hours ago. To make up for Brock Bowers being injured and almost every one of them that we mentioned came through in a big time way. Including McConkie who's right behind him. Some big catches for Ladd today. Dejon Edwards two touchdowns on the ground. Well, I'll tell you one thing that we found from this game. Carson Beck is not the weak point of this football team Absolutely at all. Absolutely not. And you can see the smile feeling pretty good about being in his hometown. And Billy Napier's team falls to five and three, three and two in the conference. Georgia still unblemished at eight and zero, oh, and five and zero oh in the SEC. So Georgia joins that list that we talked about: Liberty and Michigan, with an eight and zero oh start and twenty-five straight, fourth longest streak in SEC history.